Here we'll be looking at a scheduling problem using linear programming. So suppose we're responsible for staffing the math tutors for the lunch hour at City College. And the available tutors uh, can range from being high school students to university professors, so their hourly rates vary. So below the bottom of this text box, we have five tutors listed. We have the subjects that they're willing to tutor and what they will charge to cover the lunch hour in the math lab. So, you know, when we do a linear program, we, we always have to first figure out what our variables are, and then we have to set up the objective function, and then we have to figure out what the constraints are. Uh, the variables is a little bit different here. Usually when we you do a variable with linear programming, like let's say we have a variable x, well, x generally could be any positive number. But we're going to use a different type of variable here called a binary variable. Binary just means two choices, yes, no, zero, one, heads or tails. We're going to think of the binary variable here to be a zero if we don't hire the person and a one if we do. Okay, so one means we would hire the person. So for each of these five tutors, I want a variable for each of them that will in the end be either zero, don't hire, or one, hire. Now, I have typed those in previously. So you see here at the top of the page, I have all five tutors. Like I like to do, I have highlighted there where the actual value of the variable will reside. Now the cost function here, that should be actually pretty easy to do. Let's just transfer these cost numbers from the text box. Okay, so we have here our 75 through our 15. And in order to work out the total cost, we could just do the sum product of the two lines that we've established. So we'll do the variable cells and we'll do the cost and enter. Currently, the total cost is zero. Now, you might not have completely understood what I was talking about with the binary variables, so let's test something here. Now, this is just to cover a lunch hour, okay? So no one can work more than one hour. Let's say we do hire Al so that Al works. If Al works, then that's a zero. I'm, I'm sorry, that is a one. And notice where our cost is updated to, $75. If we don't hire Jill, then she's a zero, and the cost doesn't go up at all. If we do hire Cal, one means we hire them. And so we put in a one there. Notice that would be 75 and 30 for 105. So when we're all done with this problem, we should have a sequence of zeros and ones, and the ones will tell us which of those five need to be hired. I just go and clear these out. All right. Now, what are our constraints here? Well, it's not so much that we're limited in anything. You know, all five of these people are willing to, uh, to be hired, but we have certain requirements. We said we have to make sure that all the subjects will be covered by whoever it is that we hire. Now, if you go through the list of these courses, um, and start jotting them down, you'll find that there are actually seven different subjects represented here. And I typed them uh, here in, in column A. Algebra through statistics covers everything which is in this list here. Now what I'd like to do next <clears throat> is for each of these five tutors, Let's just look in the column and let's, let's check the appropriate boxes. So um, L can cover calculus or probability. Okay, so I'll put a 1 there for calculus and a 1 for probability. Jill, algebra, 
and geometry. Okay, now Kale arithmetic. Okay. Geometry. All right. And statistics. Next person business math. And then probability and statistics. And then finally D is arithmetic and algebra. All right, there we go. <clears throat> now notice that no one tutor uh, is willing to teach all of these subjects, so we can't get away with just hiring one person. Um, let me just kind of experiment with this. Uh, if we hired Cal, we could get arithmetic, geometry, and statistics. Um, if we hired Al, we could also pick up calculus and probability. So the trick is going to be the, the lowest, the fewest hires, um, well, not really the fewest hires, but the hires that would account for the lowest cost that would end up covering all of these subjects. You know, so for instance, we probably would rather not hire Al if we didn't have to, because he's, he's probably a professor and he's charging $75 for that hour. Okay, so we have to try to figure out a way of, of setting this up now. Now with linear programming, um, you know, remember I've, I've set them up in my other videos, essentially always kind of going the same way with a left-hand side of the constraint, and then a type, which is like, for instance, is less than or equal to, and then the right-hand side, we do it this way, and when we then we reach for Excel Solver, it'll be a piece of cake. All right, now, what do we have to really do here? Well, <coughs> excuse me. For the first left-hand side here, what we're going to do is something that should be familiar to you from a lot of linear programs. We're going to do the sum product. And we're going to take the variable row. And by the way, we will make it uh, absolute reference. So you want to do whatever you have to do on your computer to put in the dollar signs. I'm, what I'm working at right now, I have to do uh, a uh, control at 4. All right, and then we're going to take it and we're going to multiply by the row coefficients for algebra. And let's hit enter there. Now, essentially what it's saying is since we haven't hired anyone, no one will be covering algebra. But let's say we hire Jill, and let's put this in. Let's just experiment. Suppose we hire Jill, so we put a 1 underneath Jill. Now notice that there will be one algebra tutor in the room. So we hired the right person. Whereas if we hired Al also, notice he won't update this line. It won't become 2 because Al is not one of the people willing to tutor algebra there. All right, so logic looks good. We'll just clear those contents out and we'll go and we'll copy this formula down. So we do that. Okay. Now, experiment with me. Right, let's hire Jill and let's hire D. So if we hire Jill and we hire D, let's see if it's updated things correctly. Well, Jill and D were both willing to tutor algebra, so we have two people in the room who can do algebra. Uh, we have one person in the room who will tutor arithmetic because D was willing to. Um, Jill was not. But notice we still have lots of subjects which neither Jill nor D would be willing to go and tutor here. You know, so we don't really quite have a solution. And also, right here, two people are willing to do algebra. That, there's no problem with that. It might sound like overkill, but we just said, let's make sure that if anyone walks in the room needing help in one of these subjects, there's someone in the room that can help them. All right, I'll zero those back out. Okay, now, the right-hand side, we're going to indicate 
what our needs are. Now, we need at least one person who can do algebra. And similarly, we need at least one person who can do each of the other subjects. And for the type, well, we're okay if we have more than one person who can do a subject, but we need to have at least one tutor in the room that can handle, say, calculus or statistics. So this is what it would look like, our linear program. Now, let's go to our solver and let's see what happens. Let's see if it, answer, if it solves a problem in a way that's satisfactory to us. So, of course, we go to data, we have our solver um, already installed. As usual, I've used this all the time, so I need to reset everything. Okay, so um, let's get to work on this. Our objective would be this cost function that we set up. We definitely want to minimize cost, and our variable cells would be these, this little row here, which will tell us if we're going to hire people or not. And now for our constraints, they're all greater than or equal to, so it'll be very easy to go and add those. Click your add, and you can grab all, what was it, seven of them, change to greater than or equal to, and then grab all seven of the ones there, and we'll click OK. Uh, Non-negative, that's good. Simplex, that's good also. We'll try solve. Says it's found a solution. All our constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Just means from a mathematical viewpoint, nothing is wrong. Let's look, let's look at our answer. Uh, our total cost would be $160. Notice here, everything is being covered. We needed one person. We have more than one. But what about these .5s here? We look at the hiring situation. One means we hire Al. One means we hire A from accounting, but Jill, Cal, and D, we kind of wanted these to be ones or zero, meaning hire or not hire. Well, uh, you, now you might look at it and go, no, this is okay. Professor, no problem. We've got 0.5s. That just means we hire them for a half an hour. But you see, the reason I didn't want the problem to do that is the tutors are unwilling to work for less than the full hour. Okay? said that right in the problem there. So, you know, look at this way. If someone has to drive 15 minutes to get there, it may not be worth it to them to just work a half an hour. So we have to have a way of fixing this so that it won't give us answers of 0.5. And fortunately, that's a very easy fix. Go back in the solver, and I'm going to show you how to add a constraint that will force the variables to be either 0 or 1. So click your Add the constraints. Now select all five of the variable cells and in the middle here something we haven't used before. It is BIN. If you click on BIN it explains that means binary zero or one. So just by making all the variables binary and then rerunning it Found a solution. Oh, and okay, so if we're not allowed to hire people for half an hour, notice what we have. Al and Jill will be hired. Cal's the only one who's not going to be hired. So it turns out we had to have Al on board. I wonder why that is. Well, if we look at the original chart, when it comes to calculus, Al was the only one who was willing to tutor it. You know, so he was absolutely essential there. Okay, so that's how we could minimize the cost. Now, before we sign out, just want to point out this problem, this sort of situation can be made a lot more useful than it sounds because let's say I'm in the real world. Um, if I were staffing a math lab at, a, at my university, I would probably have more restrictions than just saying make sure there's someone who can cover these things. Most students who go to math lab are looking for help in algebra or in my experience, statistics. So in that case, if I felt like, oh, I better have extra coverage there, 
then what I could do is on the right hand side, I could change those ones to twos. So I could make, you know, for algebra, make the right hand side two. Well, that's okay, because notice in our solution, we, we had two. But maybe I also would want to make statistics two and then rerun it. If there's an answer, Solver will find it for us. So if you're thinking about like staffing a restaurant, for instance, there might be certain hours where you need more servers or where you need more short order cooks or things like that. The LP scheduling problem can be easily adapted to a wide variety of situations. Okay, I'm signing out.